Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another epi of League Unlock. And the theme of today's highlights and matches is, of course... What is up, down, and sideways? You lovely individuals. Welcome back. It's another repi of League Unlock. And today's episode theme is a little bit of revenge. Best served cold, as they say. I never understood why they say that. I don't. Why would revenge be better served cold versus hot? I don't, I don't know the intricate tastes of what revenge is, but I know that even though it's pre recorded, it's happening a little bit later in the day, Gen G. Got some of that revenge against KT Rolster. You might be asking, what revenge are you talking about? Well, that little one in the last column on the hands of Gen G is courtesy of KT Rolster from earlier in the year. And it was a it was a bit of a shellacking dismantling that KT gave to Gen G. So they were looking for revenge in this one with a bit of a spicy game one comp with the Jack's Jungle and the Twisted Fate top for Keen. This was this was a slow burn, but Genji was just waiting to blow the doors open. They somehow escaped that dragon fight with no kills. One to zero at 20 minutes. And then finally we get the old bait shuffle out of Chovy. He dashes in, flashes out, then does the shuffle for Genji to finally find a team fight. Three kills go their way. They eventually get soul point. Took a little bit longer than traditionally uh, for Gen G to close out this game. And I, I'm surprised it didn't end three minutes after they won that fight. But this twisted fade out of Keen was an absolute menace. He had like a 3k gold lead individually in that top lane matchup against the Udyr at one point. Chobi finally gets a nice little shuffle there to close things out. 12 to 0. Not a single death the way of Gen G in that first game to kind of prove that maybe KT's roaster coaster had peaked with that Gen G uh, series win because since then they have looked like different animals and I don't mean different animals in a good way. I mean they have looked like a team that's a shell of their former selves but KT time and time we dealt them they bounce back when their backs are up against the wall and game two Keen Pulls out the Tristana top against Nar. Gets an advantage early, but he got classic Tristana syndrome and a couple times in a row. You see him Wing aggressively to try and get a kill. This looks like it's not a replay, but this was another 0-3 start eventually for the Tristana as a couple of times he jumps in, immediately gets ganked by P.O. Sick, but really... It didn't matter. And you heard the broadcast, Atlas and Chronicler talk about it. There's 380 carries on this comp. So even though Keen's 0-3, Canyon shows some love to the bot lane. And that is a Zeri starting with a 2-0. And then Canyon's just hopping over casually, stealing a Hextech soul. Chovy shows up with the package and it doesn't even matter. They, I mean, mission accomplished. We already got uh, the Elder or the Dragon Soul, and then Canyon follows it up with a nice kick on to BDD to pop him off. Oh, the Lee Sin just having an absolute field day. That blew things open for Gen G. Now with the Soul to their name, they picked up a Varen, and then we get the scrap around the Elder Dragon, which, I mean, kudos to KT. Down 9k gold almost. They play a pretty damn good fight, but Pays is the classic. Unbelievably tanky Zeri, even though he's building full damage, he ends up doing almost 7k damage in this fight as the Hex Gate comes in for Chovy. Canyon ends up picking up that kill. Now it's, again, a game that took a little bit longer than you would have thought uh, for Genji to close this out because they were just absolutely suffocating KT around the map, but we're still going north of 35 minutes in this game. It's another basically 4v5 as Keen says, all right, we can finally close this game out. But I'll tell you what, I ain't hitting the Nexus. I'm gonna let the minions do the dirty work. I'll clean them away. And then what is that? One, two, three, four, five. We got five, six, seven, almost at least six super minions coming in to whack and thwart the Nexus as Genji successfully gets that revenge against KT. They will not have another blemish on what is their perfect record so far. Uh, out, aside from that KT loss, they're now 11 and 1, and KT all of a sudden rocking a three game losing streak. As I alluded to earlier, they have not looked nearly the same level where we were ready to 
put them into that legit contender status for top three ever since that's lost to Hanwha Life, that series. They've been on a downward trajectory. Still, obviously, an opportunity for them to bounce back, but a rough day for Daft, not able to get much done on that smolder pick, whereas Pays was an absolute menace on the Zeri. So looking for more of a level up uh, from KT Rolster. Gen.G honestly looked like they were just going through the motions, and I think that's why it took a little bit longer for them to close it out. Even Lahans at the end was kind of trash-talking Keen a little bit, saying, you got to stop dying. But my man's having too much fun on Tristana. Uh, Jackie Love was having some fun on the Rift today in his revenge match against his former squad in IG, and this ain't no pushover IG, actually had the better record uh, than uh, Jackie Love and Top Esports coming into this matchup and game two, because Top Esports takes game one, say, okay, business as usual, but game two, Jackie Love actually wasn't having very fun. As we see Leyen on that pocket pick, Nidalee, same could be said for YSAM, but the early game was all about Raven for on as he picks up one kill and Leanne was just absolutely camping the living daylights, daylights out of top esports bottom lane. He rolls back down again and it's two more kills that end up going over to the Draven and uh, listen, 99 teams out of 100, they get a 4-0 and start Draven. They're probably going to close out the game. Wink was landed hooks all over the place. YSKM being on a Camille pick was actually pretty fun and 369, despite being down 13k as a team, he got one shutdown on the Draven and he's going to chase down on here. It looked like even with such a huge goal deficit, TES might be able to have an avenue to win with the Jacks, but we forgot to look at the base. There's no recall coming out of 369 or Cream. They are trapped and the, yeah, the Camille and the Nico were in the base, so they are uh, going to close this one out. Sub 30 minutes, incredibly dominant second game out of IG to prove that, listen, they're here to stick around. They're here to make some noise in not just the regular season, but potentially in the playoffs as well, because they were they were cooking up some spicy stuff when it came to that draft. You saw the Camille, you saw the Nidalee. They roll back some more of that action in game three and maybe even a little bit spicier because we keep the Nidalee in the jungle for Lien and we get the coveted duo mid-jungle Nidalee and Renekton coming through. The classic early game staple of Fiora top for YSKM. But what is this? Is this Ord by 369? Ripping a little solo kill on the Fiora and then simultaneously you jump to the bot lane where Tien was given a little bit of action on his patented Lee Sin. Two kills going over to the bot lane. A double for Jackie Love. Yes, that is a support Sejuani for Wink alongside uh, that Santa, but Jackie Love, he looked angry. Look at this team comp. He's the only real source of damage on this squad. They double down on him after he gets completely camped and smashed in game two. They say, yeah, but you're still Jackie Love. Varus is an insane pick. He obviously goes for the attack speed build when he is the only source of damage, even though it's a relatively squishy comp out of IG. But Jackie Love and PES come back a little bit angry in this third game. Already almost a 10k gold lead. There were multiple flanks that God bless their heart. IG was trying to find some avenue back into this game, but it's the gold lead's too big at this point already. Uh, weren't even able to get a kill. So many low health bars for TES, and you know those just feel real bad. It ends up being 22 2-2 in favor of kills uh, for top esports to now match the win total out of IG. Still think that's a team that can absolutely be a threat when the playoffs roll around. But TES, they turned their brains back on after that disaster finish from against Fun Plus Phoenix last week. They pick up the win. Jackie Love gets his revenge. It's hardly revenge. He hasn't been on IG in like four years. But still... We're going to absolutely beat that storyline to death. We thought the stomp in the LCK today would be Fear X versus Hanwha Life. But honestly, Fox actually showed up on this one. They had a dominant game win to force a third game against Hanwha Life to force them into a reverse sweep scenario. After Zeka has a fantastic Akali game, we head into that third game. And it was a rough day on the Rift for Peanut. But it didn't really matter because it was clear that even though there's some mechanically gifted individuals on Fox, 
the macro, it ain't there yet. You got this huge dive going on that is outnumbered in the favor of Hanwha Life. They only got two under there. It ends up being a one for one. And then across the map, they got two turrets. An inner turret in the top lane, an outer uh, in the mid lane. So constantly Hanwha Life was just doing trades in their favor. Here, they just got the Mountain Soul and it was basically Doran soloing it. Meanwhile, we're going to have essentially a 4v5 scenario before Doran finally does show up. So not only are they getting Mountain Soul across the map, they end up forcing Fox into a fight that they want absolutely no part of. So it was an absolute macro diff uh, in that third game where Hanwha Life just positively trading across the map time and time again. So it takes three games, but Hanwha, a completely opposite trajectory. And you're, if you're looking at the classic turning point of the season right now, for both Hanwha and KT, it is that head-to-head -head series because since then, Hanwha Life has ascended into firmly being that third best team in the LCK, and KT has fallen out of the seatbelts on their bolster coaster as they lose three in a row to sit at six and five. Hanwha Life... Things looking good as usual, not as good as Gen G. Also had uh, both BLG and JDG taking care of business, as we come to expect from the two best teams in the LPL. Lots of weekend action coming up with LCS. Finally, a two-week hiatus is going to be back on the rift. Some big matchups in the LCK and LPL as well. But that is it, my beautiful people, today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you all so much for joining, as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.